I've been interested in design since before I even knew what design was, really. Um, I was always making things, I was always conceiving of things. I've always, crucially, been interested in, in physically making things myself. Not only because I was interested in doing that, but I think because I had the ability to do that. I was born and brought up in Australia, and um, you know, uh, unlike Europe, uh, there was probably more of a, a necessity to be able to do things yourself. Um, it wasn't like you could kind of run down to the shop and, and, and buy all of the cool things that I read about. You know, you kind of needed to do it yourself. From an early age, I was really obsessed with watches. And as soon as I could tell the time with a conventional watch, my uncle gave me this, you know, fairly modest, small, Timex watch, I remember it very distinctly. So this was a fantastic thing, but uh, much to his horror, I, um, I took it to pieces, you know, I pulled it apart immediately and set about rebuilding in my grandfather's garage, which is pretty much where I lived as a child, um, building another case for it in plexiglass. And that was probably my first design and it, it worked. You know, I mean, of course I didn't actually rebuild the watch. I mean, I just took the, the insides of the watch and transplanted it into another one. But that was very early and um, in some ways successful exercise in not only making something, but, but designing something. As a teenager, I knew I wanted to make things, I wanted to create things. And, and I was sort of inspired by certain things in Australia at the time, you know, by the youth culture, of course, because it's where I grew up. It was really more about sort of surfing and, and you know, uh, beach culture, water, bright colours. The freedom that I was kind of afforded at, at art school really became a very liberating thing and I got used to it very quickly. I enjoyed it um, and, and that, that I, I guess, in a way, gave me some clues as to how I wanted to, um, you know, as to how I wanted my career to unfold. And, and so I suppose I kind of became known for creating objects, and mostly we're talking furniture as well, because, you know, as well as watches, I had a particular interest in designing furniture as a, as a really great way of expressing some of my early ideas. And, and the forms that I was, was using were round, and uh, some would say organic. That was a label that um, was attached to my style very, very, very early on. It wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't necessarily chasing a style in itself, but I suppose it had a lot more to do with where I was at the time. After Australia, I, I went immediately to Japan and um, there was no real history of contemporary furniture at that point in Japan, but it was an incredible moment there. It was the sort of so-called bubble economic time, it was incredibly buoyant, everyone was talking about Japan. And uh, quite apart from anything else, it was just a very, very exciting place to be and a sort of an inspirational place to be. And I had always had a love of the way the Japanese people and the Japanese culture had sort of um, solved problems in the way that I like to solve problems. I had a portfolio of, of, of designs under my arm and I was there um, with my girlfriend at the time, and I didn't know anyone, really. Um, and I was a kid, you know, I, I didn't have a clue. You know, I wasn't gonna knock on people's doors looking for a job because there were no jobs in that, in that industry really to be had. But my, uh, my girlfriend was uh, walking across a pedestrian crossing during a monsoon, so it was raining very heavily, and a very kind Japanese man offered to sort of share his umbrella as she crossed the road, and they got talking, and it turns out he had a company that manufactured furniture. And he took me under his wing and um, supported me, and we remain friends to this day. And he also was the first person to bring Philip Stark to Japan uh, and one or two other young young designers, but I met him completely by chance like that. So I thought that, you know, that was kind of a crazy, a crazy coincidence, really. One of my greatest sources of inspiration has always been, you know, looking at the way different cultures do what I do, you know, because it happens in different ways in different places. And I've always found that very fascinating. 
to a very large degree, it really had a huge influence on me in the way that I do what I do now. You know, in terms of the broad variety of things that I do and my understanding of the world as a sort of a single place and, and how design sort of fits into that philosophy. At some point, really, I, I had to make an appearance in Europe. And the obvious place, of course, for all Australians is, is London. So in, in about 1987, I think, I came to London. It was a place where I could continue my work in a really, you know, in a, a relatively sort of aggressive way. But London always proved to be a, a practical base to do what I do on a kind of a worldwide stage. So in terms of the conception of, of ideas, it, it really um, has evolved since I first started doing this. Um, of course, on, on a fundamental level, the process has never changed. You know, you think of an idea, really. You dream about, you know, how you would solve the problem in a, in a different way. And, and, that, and that same philosophy is, is, you know, was the way I would do it when I was 10 years old. Um, the difference now, of course, is that I have absolute uh, milestones and deliverables. You know, I'm working with big clients. Um, everyone has schedules. You know, I've got a company and there are certain kind of uh, practical and commercial realities that, that one has to consider now. So that, in a sense, drives the way you, you, you approach the conception in a different way. Uh, in the sense that you have to be a little more disciplined. It's thinking of an idea. You know, you just have to find the space, the headspace, mostly, um, some calm, some quiet. Um, it's getting ideas out of your head into the real world. The fact that I work on so many different types of products um, it is not because I, I, you know, I want to do it for the sake of doing it. You know, it's not, um, let's say, a box ticking exercise for me. You know, I view my role as a sort of a troubleshooting. You know, I'm a kind of a gun for hire. You know, you know, most of the clients that I have, they've identified a need to be able to look differently at how um, a problem might be solved. And I, I view it as a problem because if it wasn't a problem, they wouldn't be coming to me they'd be doing it themselves. Um, and it's with those sorts of fresh eyes that I think, um, you know, small breakthroughs can be made. We're providing more choice to consumers. You know, that's the way I'd like to look at it, that, you know, I, I, I love what I do because, but of course what we have to do is provide good choice because our role as designers is to is to dictate style you know consumers will base their choice and base their taste largely or their understanding of what they consider to be attractive on what exists they can only do that that's that's a consumer's only frame of reference is what's out there and what exists you know i think that's the opportunity that designers have to sort of lift the bar you know but I've always considered that there are some kind of absolutes in, in, in my world, um, you know, and they have to do with taste, they have to do with beauty, they have to do with quality. You know, there are some, there are some sort of fundamental attributes that, are, that at least I feel are important, um, important for me, my work. I've always been very much of the opinion that, you know, you can sort of take it or leave it. Um, it's never, necessarily imposed upon upon anyone else you know you, you you have a choice actually at the end of the day and this is my choice it's about providing um, alternatives for people so I'm providing one alternative you know it's one way of, of, of looking at things but I personally have never really felt like I need to change the way that I do things or have felt that that I uh, I need to modify my my kind of approach fundamental issue for me is simply designing objects that stand the test of time you know it's not disposable and it won't become obsolete and and that ties back to my sense of beauty my sense of quality my sense of precision and the fundamental issue for me is simply create something that you can use forever <laughs>